It's been a long time since I played with Arduino, so it's time to do a little project. And I'm going to use this Arduino Nano, and the reason for that will become apparent soon. And I've got a little project in mind which includes measuring current. So this is the ACS712 module, a little current sensor module, and it's available in 5, 10 and 20 amp versions, I believe. Uh, but this is the baby of the bunch, and it's the 5 amp model. Now the ACS712 creates a voltage between VCC and ground, uh, which is proportional to the current flowing through the IC. However, it is bidirectional, so that means that 0 amps is around the 2.5 volt mark, assuming we're powering it from 5 volts, so I need to determine which way the current needs to flow to induce an increase in that voltage, and which way induces a decrease. Okay, so here's my first little experiment, and uh, I've put the Nano now in one of these breakout boards, and I've connected this ACS712 to analog zero. I have my bench power supply connected up to the ACS712, and I'm using this 5 watt 10 ohm resistor as a load. And I thought it might be interesting to go through the code that's on the Arduino, and most of it is uh, about setting up the screen. I use this particular library, the uh, LCD5110 underscore graph from Rinky Dink Electronics. Uh, I find it easy to set up and uh, easy to write code for. So we set up the LCD screen on these pins here as marked in the comments, and we import a uh, font to show on the screen. We initiate the LCD and uh, we tell it to use that font that we've just imported. And then the loop is very simple. We clear the screen, uh, we print uh, zero and a colon here in the top left hand corner, and then we print the analog read of A0 just next to it. And I am printing all the other analog uh, pins as well, but that's not necessary. And of course, we get to the bottom of the loop and we update the uh, LCD, we wait one second and then we start all over again. And of course, with no current flowing, uh, we are seeing a reading somewhere in the middle of uh, 0 to 1023, and we're getting a fairly consistent reading there of 514. But now, if I turn on my bench power supply, and now we can see we're at 507, 508 with a couple of hundred milliamps uh, flowing through this circuit. So that number has decreased when the uh, current is flowing in this direction from positive down to negative. So uh, I want to switch this around to make sure that I get an increase with a positive current. So with that sensor resting at about 514, 515, if I turn on the current now with the positive on this side and negative on that side, yes, that 514 number jumps up to about 521, 522. Excellent. Now you may have already guessed, but I'm using an Arduino Nano because it has eight analog inputs as opposed to the Uno, which only has six. And that's because I like to monitor the current of eight different things all at the same time. So I've powered up all these ACS712s now with these wires. Um, so there's just one positive and one negative, and the positive comes to this end, the negative goes to that end, and then they loop in between each other. But now I need to connect up the sense wires to the analog inputs here so that I can determine the zero point of each of these individual uh, ACS 712s. So I have all my ACS 712s wired up, all eight of them, and we can see the different coloured wires here going to the different sensors. We've got orange there, yellow, uh, what's that at the end? Purple. And uh, we can see on the screen here that they're roughly in the middle, 512. That's about halfway between uh, 0 and 1023, but I'm going to watch these and uh, take some notes and see if I can find their exact midpoint for each different sensor. 
It's also worth noting that I need to be careful with the ACS712 um, and magnetic fields because it's a Hall effect sensor and uh, magnetic fields, and there's, here's a magnet here, can affect the readings. So if I move that closer to this first one, we can see yeah, we're getting readings of 700 and odd um, as that magnet moves closer to the IC. So those eight current sensors are going to go on here on my eight AGM batteries because I want to do an experiment. When I built this battery bank I went to great lengths to make sure all these cables were exactly the same length because I wanted to ensure even charging and discharging of all these batteries. However, without eight current sensors, well, that's difficult to prove. So each of these current sensors is going to go on the negative side uh, because that's easier to access with these short cables in line and uh, we'll stick them on temporarily and we'll see if these batteries are charging and discharging evenly. So uh, I'll start disconnecting these batteries and connecting up these ACS 712s and uh, we'll see what that looks like in a minute. I'm imagining wires everywhere. Well, if it wasn't over-engineered before. <laughs> um, so that's all the ACS 712s installed. And the sense wires, if somebody can remember this for me, please, is pink, brown, grey, white, green, orange, yellow, purple. So there we are, all the powers off and all the numbers on the uh, screen there are somewhere in the middle, around 512. And I think I've got them all in the right order. It goes pink, brown, grey, white, green green orange yellow purple um, fingers crossed that's correct now let's turn on the main power which uh, should turn on my lights and should uh, adjust the numbers here that we're seeing and yes they've all dipped so that's a, a good sign to start with um, now i just need to adjust the code on the arduino so here we are for the code for this uh, Arduino now and again we're setting up the screen to start with. We're also setting up these floats, uh, floating decimal point numbers here, I0, well that's going to be the current on um, A0, battery 0, I1, battery 1. Uh, and we also have these initial zero readings which uh, I've adjusted now to the numbers that we saw earlier on the screen. Moving down the page, uh, we've got the setup, which just starts the LCD and does nothing more. And the loop here, well, uh, we're using those floating point uh, values there. And we read analog zero. We take away this offset figure up here from the correct sensor. And we divide by 102.4. And my thinking around that number is that the uh, ACS712 that I have can measure from minus 5 to plus 5 amps well that's 10 amps in total so if we divide 1024 the maximum number by 10 well the steps are 102.4 so that will equal 1 amp so this um, sketch is going to give us amps on the readout and on the second page here, uh, we clear the screen and we write all those values to the screen in the various different places. Wait for a quarter of a second and do it all again. Okay, without further ado, let's plug in the Arduino with that sketch on it. And we can see that there is a negative number on all of these um, ACS 712s here because my bench lights above are taken from that battery bank. So, uh, yeah, look at that. They're all fairly even. They are jumping around a little bit, but we've got 50, 60, 70 milliamps coming from each of these batteries at the moment, except for that first one. Um, yeah, sensor zero is jumping around all over the place, and that makes me wonder whether I've damaged it by putting that neodymium magnet close by. But all the others look reasonably close, so let's put on a couple of loads here and see if we can uh, increase those numbers. So as the draw from the batteries increases, well, uh, yeah, we're getting 120, 110 uh, milliamps there from each of these batteries. So that looks reasonably 
even. Now sadly the sun has gone in for today but uh, if I connect up a battery charger we might be able to see some positive uh, current going in so I'll just do that now. So yeah it's definitely showing positive current going into those batteries with that charger connected. However the ACS number zero is definitely showing some erratic results. And I'm not overly convinced about these numbers either. Just 30 or 40 milliamps going into that battery. I think that should be higher. But that could be an error with my maths in the code. If you see some glaringly obvious errors in my code, please do point them out and I will be sure to rectify them. But for the moment at least, I think I've proved the concept. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.